Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mama with the Good Hair. My name is Jessica. I'm your host. Thank you so much for being here today. Today, we are going to be starting a new series all about routines, weekly routines, that kind of thing. This week, we're going to be talking about sleep routines as it pertains to your hair. So let's just dive right into it. So just some background to start. When you see people with like a crazy 10-step hair care routine, specifically when they're going to sleep, it's because they're trying to prevent damage while they sleep. Doing these 10 steps is like everything you can do. Each thing is like a line of defense against damaged hair. So when you see it, that's what we're trying to do and the reason why we do it. The goal isn't to cut out damage 100%. That's impossible. Everybody has some kind of damage, even like from your environment. The goal is to just minimize it where you can. So even if you only take one of these steps out of the 10 steps or whatever it is you're still going to be preventing damage with just taking that one step and again the more you do the more you're going to help your hair there's four kinds of hair damage we're going to break down some of the types of hair damage and talk about how we prevent them when we sleep i've talked in depth about the kinds of damage in other videos and other podcasts so if you want to deep dive on those go for it today we're going to talk about just like i said specifically sleep Okay, to start out, we're gonna talk about mechanical damage. So this is the most common one when you sleep and the one we're gonna focus the most on. If you shower at night versus during the day, that's gonna change your routine a little bit. The goal is here to not go to sleep with wet hair. You wanna make sure that if you shower at night, if you wash your hair at night, you're blow drying your hair or at least letting it air dry halfway or so before you go to sleep. Your hair is the most fragile when it's wet, so you really want to prevent any kind of friction from happening when your hair is wet like that. So what I do is if I do shower at night, I lightly blow dry my hair with just like a cool temperature on my blow dryer and just let, at least let it dry halfway or so. Then after I blow dry, I use this brush. This one, you wanna look for the one with holes in it that's specifically made to detangling. It's a wet brush. So it's meant for your hair when it is wet, when it is really fragile, it's really meant to help with tangles. So what I do is you wanna brush vertically and use a detangler, whether your hair is wet or dry, brush through it, make sure you get all those tangles out before you go to sleep. Next, I put a leave-in conditioner. It doesn't really matter. This is kind of like a curl cream, leave-in kind of cream, but you want to use something that's going to protect your ends specifically if your ends are really prone to being dry or damaged like mine are. So I put this on wet or dry hair. It does not matter. And I just, it's going to look a little weird at first, but I just, once I let it soak in the entire night with that deep conditioner, I wake up and it's it makes all the difference. If you do have really dry or split ends, that can be a sign of mechanical damage to your hair. What happens is the outer layer of your hair splits open and the inner layer is exposed and it's more vulnerable to damage. So when you're brushing your ends really hard and if your ends are breaking off, you're gonna wanna really make sure you use the leave-in conditioner at night, especially on those ends. Help seal them up, help minimize all that damage and just let it marinate all all night long and you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be a world of a difference. So after I've brushed my hair, you want to actually sleep with your hair up and out of your face. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. The key word here is a loose braid or a loose ponytail. I like to use a claw clip because I sleep on my side or you can use, these are kind of like elastics that aren't gonna pull. They're made out of like fabric or use like a silk scrunchie, something like that. And you're gonna wanna put your hair either in a really loose bun, loose ponytail on top of your head or a loose braid that goes down your head. Again, I use the claw clip. I just like twist it up and clip it in. The key here is to reduce friction. So if you're a big tosser and turner like I am at night, that's causing more friction on your hair. It can 
cause more breakage again especially if your hair is wet when you go to sleep so you want to minimize all that friction that's happening against your pillow and that's going to minimize your breakage to your hair and then lastly you also want to sleep with a silk pillowcase they're like five dollars at target go get yourself one when you sleep with this this also reduces friction so think about if you rub your hand against a flannel pillowcase versus a silk pillowcase there's a lot more friction with the flannel pillowcase flannel is like the worst thing for your hair versus the silk pillowcase it just glides right along you want your hair to do the same thing so with tying it up at night and using the silk pillowcase it's going to be glass there's going to be barely any friction and you're going to wake up with less tangles less need to brush your hair all those things are going to reduce that mechanical damage and then when you do use a silk pillowcase you want to make sure that you're washing it pretty regularly even if you're just taking the pillowcase off and washing it more often than your entire bed set you want to at least wash it once a week or so because all that product and everything builds up onto your pillowcase and it's just not good for your hair or your skin so I just slip it on and off throw it in the wash and I wash it a lot more regularly than I do my sheets and the rest of my bedding. Okay, so now let's talk about chemical damage. So this is if you're processing your hair, if you're dyeing your hair, any kind of like salon process is going to give you some chemical damage. We already know this, especially if you're blonde, we've kind of just accept that this form of damage is going to happen because we want the blonde hair or the perm or whatever, whatever we're getting done. So the key here is to accept that type of damage and minimize all the rest. So let's talk about chemical damage. I do have another series on my podcast all about chemical damage in pre-salon, post-salon, what to do to minimize damage there. So you can also deep dive into that if you want to, but today we're just going to be talking about sleep routine and how to minimize that kind of damage when we sleep. So once a week, I do an oil treatment on my scalp and on my ends, and I just let it soak and marinate for like 12 hours. So I'll usually do it in the morning when I'm like running around, running errands, and then sometimes I'll sleep in it as well, and then I'll wash it out in the morning. So this helps just like kind of hold the color in your hair. It helps with a lot of things and just like overall damage. It helps moisturize your scalp so your scalp doesn't get overly dry because of all that chemical damage. And then once a week, I'll also throw in a purple mask. So I use a hair mask that's really hydrating and has very pigmented violet color to it so it's getting rid of all that brassy tones while also hydrating my ends so what I do when I do that is I put a microfiber towel over my pillowcase because I don't want my silk pillowcase to get that purple and stains on it so the microfiber towel is really good or you can also use an old t-shirt but just something other than that basic pillowcase you want something that's going to be gentle on your hair especially because your hair is going to be a little bit wet when you put in the hair mask so I also make sure that my hair is damp but it's not like soaking soaking wet so I'll still dry it or I'll just get it a little bit wet just so it's just barely damp enough to hold the hair mask product in it really rub it in and then again I'll put it in a claw clip or like a loose braid so that way even though it's wet I'm still not tossing and turning on it all night the hair mask I use like I said it's very pigmented purple so it's helping with brassy tones it also has desert date oil in it so it helps with like any kind of damage that already exists in my hair it's very very hydrating to my ends I said my ends they tend to get really dry and damaged if I'm not taking care of them so it helps a lot with that extra hydration and then it also has black spruce bark in it which is really cool if you don't know about black spruce bark it is basically helping with any kind of pollutants in the air environmental factors that are damaging your hair so like think hard water uv rays air pollution things like that it really helps minimize all that damage honestly this mask is like out here doing the lord's work okay now let's talk about thermal damage because this one gets a little bit tricky you kind of have to pick your own routine and battles for what works with you so I told you not to sleep with wet hair and to blow dry your hair before you sleep but blow drying your hair has thermal damage to it so it's kind of a you just have to pick what works for you if you blow dry your hair every single day and you're showering in the morning then make sure you're using a heat protectant try to use a lower heat setting try to let your hair air dry more often if you're going to bed with wet hair then it's going to be better for you to blow dry and just make sure you're using that thermal protectant so it kind of is like a pick your own 
adventure here. You definitely don't want to sleep with wet hair. So I always just say make sure you air dry or blow dry and then kind of minimize it the rest of the time. Another tip when you're sleeping and you want to wake up with curls is to get yourself some cheap curlers online. There's a million different ways to do it. I've seen all over TikTok. There's the little sock tutorial, the leggings tutorial. You can get Velcro curlers. You can do crazy things with these heatless curls. If you just look up heatless curls anywhere online, you're gonna find a million things. I'll usually sleep in these like once a week or so, and that way I'm getting the curls without using a curling rod and there's no heat or extra damage to my hair. These are really fun to utilize, especially if you have like a young daughter who wants curls in her hair for school or whatever. You can do the curlers in her hair Hair, let it sleep on it without having to put a hot iron on her hair every day. It's a really fun thing to incorporate. So do you have to do all of this? Absolutely not. But the more you do, the less damage you're going to see. So even if you just incorporate brushing your hair and sleeping with it in a claw clip, you're going to see a lot less damage than if you're not doing anything. So think about each of these tips as setting up a line of defense against hair damage. So if you do one, you're setting up one line of defense. If you do two or three of these things, it's going to be even harder for damage to happen to your hair. So the more you do, the better results that you're going to get. I hope you found these sleep routine tips helpful. I hope that you incorporate them into your routines and stay tuned for next week. We're going to be talking about what I do on a weekly schedule for my hair routine. I talk a lot about different routines. If you're washing your hair daily, weekly, what to do. So I'm going to give you guys an insight into what I do personally, and I hope it works for you as well and I want to invite all you guys to my exclusive Facebook group we do lots of giveaways extra hair tips content that you're not going to see anywhere else the link to join is in the show notes if you have any other questions I'd love to connect with you guys thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week